Pastor Rob here, so happy that you've made a decision to join us today for our service. I'm so excited. We start a brand new series entitled Unnamed. And so I am so ready to share with you. But before we do that, I want to have some fun with you. You may or may not know that we actually record these services on Tuesday. So in just a few hours, it's the sixth game of the World Series, and you may or may not know I am a Dodger fan. So when you're listening to this, you either know that Pastor Rob is a very happy person or I'm incredibly sad. So if we won the World Series, yes, way to go, Dodgers, finally since 1988. And if we lost and we blew it, oh, well, the good news is God is still God. He's still sitting on the throne, and we get to worship him. Let's do that uh, before we get to, to move on to today's message. God bless you. Hello, church family. It's such an honor to be here worshiping with all of you. My name is Layla, and we're together. We're going to be preparing our hearts to worship the Lord. So wherever you are right now, I just want to invite you to stand up, lift up your hands, and just focus on the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus. Oh, Father, how amazing you are, Lord. Thank you for loving us the way that you do, Lord. Thank you that our hope is in you, Lord Jesus, and we come completely surrendering to you, Lord, knowing that as we Lift up our praises, Lord. The chains will be broken and the walls will come down, Lord Jesus. May your will just come to be. Do in us what you have already purposed for us, Lord Jesus. We love you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, the name above all names. Thank you, Lord. together strangers neighbors our blood is one children of generations of every nation of kingdom come so don't let your heart be troubled Hold your head up, I don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. Let the praise go up now. 
with us. I would like to read you a couple of verse, uh, verses from Romans. Romans 5, 1 through 5 says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Wherever you are in that, in that verse, in those verses, whether you are suffering, persevering, building character, finding hope in Christ, we can find peace in our Lord. And this next song goes so well with that. It's all about peace and bringing it all to peace. Because our Lord, He is so sovereign. We can find our peace in Him and trust everything, our worries, our anxiety, our suffering to Him. So let's, let's find peace and just praise our Lord together in th this next song.
Sometimes the greatest heroes may never even say their name. It is so good to be with you again today, and I'm looking forward to starting this new series with you called Unnamed. In this series, we'll be taking a look 
at some unnamed heroes that are found right here in the scripture. Each sermon, we're going to be introduced to an unnamed hero, a man, a woman, a child who became one of God's unlikely heroes. These stories will give us insight into how God wants us to live our lives with adventure, significance, and lasting impact hopefully inspiring us to see how God intends to use our lives for his glory. How he uses ordinary people like you and I to do extraordinary things. So hold on to your seat as we start this series, Unnamed. But before we do so, let's pray. God in heaven, it is a good day to be alive. And it is so good to be reminded of your goodness, of your glory, of your power, and your love in each of our lives. Thank you for that amazing time of worship. And as we pivot towards your word, God, I am praying through this transition, you would help each of our hearts find itself in your hands. God, that we would be able to listen like never before, that through your Holy Spirit, we could grab a hold of the very things that you want to do in our lives, that you would take us as ordinary people and give us a front row seat to do extraordinary things. God, I know this can be done, but only through your Holy Spirit. And so we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, these things. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, if you're taking notes right out the gate, I just want to jump into this. Uh, Write this down, foundation for series. Foundation for this series. And and right out the gate, I'd love to to give you a quote from Chris Travis, who's a pastor and a Christian author. He says this, we can make a difference that will last so much longer than any name we could make for ourselves in this world. Let me say that again. We can make a difference that will last much longer than any name we can make for ourselves in this world. I want that to sink in. And now I'd like to ask you, do you believe that to be true? This guy does. You see, the truth is, most of the greatest people who ever have lived or will live will be forgotten. Most, most, this is true for. It is not about making a name for us. It's about making a name for him. With this one life that we have, we as ordinary people can have a front row seat for seeing some extraordinary things happen. In doing so, our lives, our lives are left as a stone of remembrance pointing to him. You're like, Pastor, what does that mean? And, and, and I want to delve into this just a little bit. It, it, it's kind of a, a bonus sermon, but uh, just recently, as a matter of fact, last week, as I was leading our men's group on Thursday night Zoom, it's called Fight Night. And if you'd love to, to, to dig deeper with a group of men, you should join us on our Zoom, which is every Thursday at 7 o'clock. And you could find out information by going to our website, or you could call our office at 818-884-6480. And, and as a man, you could say, I want to join this men's group. But we were talking about, over the last few weeks, the life of Joseph. Or Joseph, that sounds good. Uh, Joshua. Uh, he's good too, Joseph. But uh, we're talking about Joshua, and, and, and this phrase for the whole night was uh, being a stone of remembrance. And we looked at a story that's tucked away in Exodus chapter 17. We're not going to look at it tonight, but it's a, it's a story where uh, there's this conversation with Moses and God, and Moses just tired of the Israelites whining and complaining as they often did. Even though they were pulled out of slavery, uh, they soon forgot what that was like, and so 
complaining and whining. And Moses is like, ah, what do I do, God? Well, you continue reading on in this chapter, and uh, there's, there's a war, there's a battle going on uh, between uh, uh, Moses and the, the Amalekites. And, 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 and he's up on the mountain, and the, the story goes, as, as Moses' uh, hands are lifted up, uh, the, the, the army uh, was winning this battle. But as his, his hands grew tired and began to fall by its side, then, then, then Aaron Aaron and Hur came alongside of him and lifted up his arms. And you could almost picture it uh, as his army was losing, as his arms were going down. But Aaron and Hur pushed him up towards the, towards the heavens. They, they eventually would win. Then there's this conversation that, 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 that Joshua needs to be here as, as, as these stones were, were put together as a, as a remembrance of, of the victory that was happening there. And it wasn't, it wasn't to, the, the, these stones were not put together so that Moses' name could be lifted up or Joshua's name or Aaron and her for being heroes, but it was to point to this idea that God was the one that gave the victory. God is the one that is to be remembered. God is the one who ought to be praised. And so these stones of remembrance were there to point to how good God is. And this, this lesson so impacted me that almost a week later, I'm still thinking about this for my own life. As I challenged the men that, that, that I was speaking with that night, I was also challenged with this idea that, that when life is over, that when Rob Denton's life is done, and, and, and people may be gathering and, and remembering my life like we did a, a uh, just a tremendous man of God from our church, Larry Powell. We had a memorial service last week out on our lawn that his life pointed to the glory of God. I would want that of my life. I don't want a name uh, uh, being recognized, Rob Denton, and oh, how great he is, and, and how wonderful he is, and he was so talented, and so this, which most people wouldn't have a struggle saying that. But I, honestly, I'm at that point at 52 years old, that I want my life to make a difference for his glory. How about you? Well, as I think about that and bring attention to that, this is, this is the core of, of really what we're talking about in this series of unnamed heroes. None of these men or women or children set out to have a name for themselves where people would say, oh, praise be to, you know, Peter for, for how amazing he is, or praise be to Susie for how amazing she is. No, our life is used in a way in which points to God Almighty. I want my life to be a stone of remembrance. How about you? Well, James chapter 4, verse 14 says, why, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. The time is now. For us, ordinary people, to live extraordinary lives that point to his glory. Colossians chapter 5 says this, Be wise in the way that you act towards outsiders. Make, and I love this, make the most of every opportunity. Ephesians says those same words. Make the most of, of every opportunity. So again, building the foundation for this entire series, this is where we're at. We want to live our, live our lives as, as stones of remembrance, pointing to him knowing that our lives are just a mist and, and, and we, we are here today and could be gone tomorrow. None of us knows when our time is up. So like Colossians and Ephesians says, we are to make the most of every opportunity right here and right now. And none of us should settle for saying, well, my life doesn't matter. I'm just me and I'm not gifted like that person. I don't have the talent like that person. No, no, no. You and I, every one of us are a child of God. 
and most of our lives, quote unquote, names will be forgotten 10 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years from now. But we can make an impact for the kingdom of God and God Almighty. Well, therefore, I would say watch for those opportunities. And in today's case, watch for those unexpected ones. Which leads me to our second point, where we're going to delve right into our text today. I'll write this down. The unexpected happens. Okay, so we're going to look at our first unnamed hero, and you're going to write down this. The unexpected happens. I want you to turn to 2 Kings. 2 Kings is where our story is going to be found. It's 2 Kings chapter 5. Uh, We believe that this is the word of God here at West Valley Christian Church. I hope that you have the word in your hand, the physical word. And if you don't, I know many of you, you, you've got a, a phone with the Bible app on it. However it is, I want you not just to trust me, although I think you can trust me. I want you to see it for yourselves that we are in God's word and we're gonna hear his truth today. Second Kings chapter five, verse one. Let me help you out. It's right after First Kings. That's right. You didn't even have to pay for that. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 1. Now Naaman was a commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded through him. The Lord had given him victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had what? but he had leprosy. A valiant soldier, but had leprosy. Here we're introduced to Commander Naaman. Highly regarded, but the Bible says he had a problem. He had leprosy. Leprosy. Every time I think of the word leprosy, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a product of, uh, of being a junior hire in the 80s when the, the, the video came out uh, with Michael Jackson thriller. And you remember those, those, I don't even know what you call them, those ghosts, those goblins, whatever. They were walking like th- this. I think of leprosy every time. You know, they, they, some of them, their skin was, was peeling. Some of them, their hands were peeling. Leprosy is not attractive. Uh, skin lesions, eye damage, loss of fingers in, in some cases, facial disfigurement, uh, and the list goes on with some of the effects of this disease. This disease for this incredible, highly respected commander was hard. It was hard for him physically. It was hard for him emotionally. It was hard for him immense, uh, for, uh, mentally. It was, it was probably, I would imagine, it was hard for him to lead with this disease. As a matter of fact, if you look into the context and the culture of this time, he could be seen as unclean. Even some would interpret that he had been rejected by God because of this disease. So this is what we know about Naaman. Commander, highly respected, uh, successful, uh, great leadership, but he had this issue that he could not run from. Probably the greatest battle he would ever face. Well, we continue reading uh, the story, and and we go to chapter 5, verse 2, and it says, Now the bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl. From Israel. I want you to underline that and highlight it because here we're introduced to our unnamed hero. Now, the bands of raiders came from Aram and had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel. Do you see that? And she served Naaman's wife. So we know Naaman, the commander. We know his disease. We know his greatest battle. We know his struggle. But now we see that this young girl has been taken captive out of her comfort, out of everything that she knows. And she's brought to be a slave, a maid in the household of this commander. So specifically to help out Naaman's wife. The, ra- the, the, 
when the raiders had, inv- had invaded Israel. There's a lot of history here. Um, there's a lot of history between the Israelites and the Armenians, uh, Syrians, as, as they're also known. She had, to, she had to be scared out of her mind when these raiders came in and took her captive. Amos chapter 1 verse 3 says, They beat down my people in Gilead as grain is threshed with iron sledges. I I can only imagine as a young girl how scary and terrifying this must have been. But the next thing you know is she's, she's in this household of this great man that has this horrific disease. She's serving him in his household serving the wife in the household. Uh, she's, she's probably unsettled in her heart. She's got a front row seat to the struggles that Naaman has with this disease. I would imagine she has some internal struggles because her captors were under the authority of this great commander. Perhaps as she washed the dishes, folded the clothes, cooked, cleaned up, maybe anger or bitterness, hatred filled her heart. Maybe disgust ran through her veins. She's now serving the man responsible for her captivity. There's a book that I'll be using uh, throughout this series The title of it is Unnamed. Chris Travis writes this in that book. From the perspective of a slave girl ripped from her home, this dread disease might be exactly what we we would expect. A little justice maybe ran through her mind. This powerful man whose command brought misery to innocent people was being punished for it. Serves him right you might think. A captive in Naaman's household could get a lot of satisfaction from perhaps watching him suffer, Travis writes. Which leads to my third point. Heroes do the unexpected. Heroes do the unexpected. You see, she's taken from her home, as I mentioned earlier, She's taken from her comfort, and she's taken from her freedom. What was this young girl thinking? Had bitterness found its way through her veins? And as I mentioned earlier, or was it hate? Or was it anger? 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 3. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria. This blows me away. He would cure him of his leprosy. Let me read this again. If only my master, this is a young girl who's now been enslaved, is serving the the household of the one that, that could have been responsible for this. If only he would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his jealousy. Are you seeing what I see here? I ask the question, what would be running through her veins? What was it, anger? Was it bitterness? Was it hatred? Was it disrespect? All of us could say, of course it would be. I I wouldn't blame her. But we read this passage and it's like, what? And that's why I said our third point is heroes do the unexpected. What did she just do? Yes, she did what we just read. Bitterness was not running through her vein. Anger was not running through her veins. You know what was running through her veins as I read this passage? 
It was compassion. Compassion. At West Valley, we've heard this word often in the New Testament, splachnitzomai, which is love from the gut. I believe she had a love for the, from her gut that was able to, to push aside that anger, that was able to push away the human response to what she was walking through. And somehow, through the power of God, she was able to respond in this situation to this man and this disease with compassion. Was it because she saw and had a front row seat to all the pain that he suffered? Was it some conversations that we will never know about? Or was it because she's just that amazing? I don't know. Maybe it was a combination of all that I have suggested. But she offered a solution to this commander's pain. She showed him kindness rather than hate. That's powerful. We say this all the time at West Valley Christian Church. Matthew chapter 22, when Jesus is asked what is the greatest commandment, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. We translate that as simply love God. And he says the second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. And we simply say this, that means love people. So the reason that our church exists is to love God and love people. And the truth is why you and I exist here on this earth is to love God and love people. I believe this young girl from Israel is loving God and loving people by her compassionate act of pointing this man towards a solution for his pain. Do you agree? Do you disagree? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 27, but God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. I believe this to be true right here. There's nothing special about this girl other than what is special about all of us. She is a child of God. She's an ordinary person that is looking for opportunity to live her life so that it would point to God Almighty. A stone of remembrance. I see this as a beautiful picture of grace. The commander did not deserve this. There was nothing that he did that would justify what she has done. Grace, a gift that is not deserved. Grace is why I get to stand here today. I do not deserve to communicate with you this amazing message. I've done nothing. As a matter of fact, you could argue that huh, I've done just the opposite. But I stand here because of the grace of God. You are alive because of the grace of God. Don't Think of yourself any less because you've made mistakes. I'm sure this young girl had made mistakes. I would even venture to guess that she had some feelings of bitterness, anger, and resentment. But she landed here with compassion. How amazing is this young girl's life? She had the courage to speak in this moment. And also, kind of as a side note, and you can call me crazy, and that's fine, because I can't hear you. But the truth is this. I 
the human point goes, okay, so she has a solution. Maybe she shares a solution so that she could hold it over the, the commander's head and say, hey, if I give you the solution, then you set me free. If I give you the solution, then I get a better bedroom. If I get a solution, then you could line my pockets with gold. But you don't see any of that. She doesn't make any of those requests. Instead of demanding justice, she offered grace. Julio Diaz, 31-year-old, social worker, got robbed while standing on one of the platforms uh, in a subway in the Bronx. Teenage boy came up to him and with a knife, and he, he demanded the wallet, and so Diaz gives him his wallet, and, 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 and the young man ran off. But before he could get too far, Diaz shouted out. He says, wait, 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 wait. He says, if you insist on robbing people, it's cold outside, so come back and at least take my coat too. Well, you can imagine the boy was shocked. And then he yelled out, if, if you're willing to risk your freedom for a few dollars, then I guess you really need the money. Again, the young man was shocked. And before the young man could disappear, he said, well, just so you know, I was on my way to, to have dinner. And if you want to join me, you're welcome to come. Again, the young man was stunned. But you know what? He was so stunned by Julio Diaz's response that he accepted the invitation. Now let me read to you the rest of what happened. The stunned teenager agreed. While they were sitting and eating, people kept coming over to greet Diaz. The manager came over, the waitress, and even the dishwashers. The boy wondered if Diaz owned the place or not. But Diaz explained that he was just a regular there. But you're even nice to the dishwasher, the teen said. Well, haven't you been taught you should be nice to everybody, Diaz replied. Yeah, but I didn't think people actually behaved that way. Well, the bill arrived and, and there was an awkward moment. Diaz said, um, well, if you give me my wallet back, I'll, uh, I'll be gladly uh, uh, to treat you tonight to dinner. The teenager did, and Diaz not only paid for the dinner, but also gave his would-be robber a $20 bill. But he did ask for something in return, the knife. Then the boy did something we never would have expected from the same guy who had first approached Diaz on the platform. He took out the knife and handed it over to him. What do you think about that story? God is in the business of doing the unexpected, my friends. As I read that story for the first time, I never would have thought that this is how that story would play out. And even after reading it many times, I think, what was Diaz doing? Like, I could never do that. But that's not the point. The point is this, that God wants us as ordinary people to do extraordinary things to point to him. It doesn't matter what your life has been up to this point. What matters is what are we doing from here, from here on out? I want to encourage you that you as an ordinary people or a person can do extraordinary things. We've learned that unexpected things happen and unexpected people rise up or unexpected heroes rise up. And then unexpected results show up. And that's what happens. If you continue reading the story in 2 Kings chapter 4 through 6, it says, Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, which is a surprise, the king of Aram said. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking uh, with him 10 talents of silver, basically just loading up because this has got to cost a lot of money. By the way, it didn't. There's another unexpected. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, with this letter I'm sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. Naaman listened to this young girl. Why? I don't know, but he did. 
He asked permission of his king to go, and, and then that king gave permission to the king of Israel and sent a letter there. And, and, and there's stuff that happens there, and you could read it in the story, but it gets passed on to one of the prophets of God, Elisha. Basically, in a nutshell, Elisha says, all right, yeah, you could be healed, but you got to go down to the Jordan River. The Jordan River is a scummy, dirty uh, place that, that no commander with all the authority that he has, all the victories underneath his belt, all the leadership, he, he responds in a prideful, arrogant way and says, no, isn't the far, far river better than me? I'm not going down the Jordan River. He gets, uh, he gets talked to about this. His pride is challenged. Again, you read the story, but eventually... He goes down to the Jordan River and he steps inside the water. He must think he's crazy as he's seeing trash and rubbish just just rush by him. The smell had to be disgusting. His pride was no longer there as he stood there in this river and he dipped himself not one time. He dipped himself not two times. Again, probably thinking, I'm an embarrassment to my leadership. No one's ever going to follow me. This is disgraceful. I don't know what I'm doing. And he dips himself a third time. He dips himself the fourth time. He dips himself a fifth time. He dips himself the sixth time. And finally, with all the doubt and all the questioning, but still acting on obedience, he dipped himself a seventh time. And then chapter 2, verse 5, uh, or chapter Second Kings chapter 5, verse 14, it says this. So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan River seven times. As the man of God had told him, and his flesh, check this out, and his flesh was restored and he became clean like that of a young boy. You see, when God says he's going to do something, he does it. Why the Jordan River? Why dip? Why seven times? I don't have an answer, but God called him to do that. He did it. And God healed him. You see, when the unexpected happens and under unexpected heroes rise up, unexpected results show up. And this king, or this, this commander, I should say, that struggled with this leprosy was now healed. And the Bible says his skin was like that of a baby. And then God is blessed. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 15, then Naaman and all of his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, now I know that there is no God in all of the world except in Israel. So please accept a gift from your servant. Yes, the commander was healed, but more importantly, God was glorified. Faith came to a nation all because a nameless slave girl, servant, did the unexpected. As we close, you write this down. Unexpected and you. With you as the unnamed hero, I have a question. Who is the Naaman in your life? Who is the Naaman in your life? Who would you have to first forgive before you could show him or her your kindness? Luke six twenty seven. In verse 28 says, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. The challenge is for us to open our eyes to the opportunities of the unexpected things that God wants us to do in our lives to bring him glory and to bring those around us that need it, his grace. Be the stone of remembrance. Thank you to this young girl for teaching us what we could apply in our lives in 2020.
Well, thank you guys for joining us for the first week of our series, Unnamed. If you didn't know, my name's Zach Taylor. I'm the student director here at West Valley Christian Church. And as we enter into this time of communion, and we've been talking about unexpected grace today, it's a great time to look back and remember that, you know, even in the New Testament, people expected Jesus to come as this conqueror, as this ruler, but instead he came as a savior for us. He came as a sacrifice. And so as we gather our bread or our juice right now, it's a great time to remember him that he died on the cross for us, that he died for our sins. And even though it might not be something that we deserved or something that we earned, uh, Jesus came to sacrifice himself, is this unexpected grace. So right now I'm going to pray for our communion, and we're going to go into a time of reflection and thinking about Christ. Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you that you did give, you, give us your grace, that you did pour out your life for us. We just pray right now, Lord, that we would just recognize you and see you in this moment and just be thankful for that. We honor you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have a meal. Let me reveal who I am. I'm your Savior. I will kneel down and wash all the sin from your soul. Servant, I am all you need. I'm the Lamb that was slain. And now that we've come to the time of offering, we just thank you so much for your generosity. And we know that at West Valley, your generosity is active. And so as a different uh, ways to give, either online or in person, pop up over my shoulder here, I just want to tell you about some of the cool things that your money is going towards. Last week, a church that we were sponsoring in Kenya, and Greg will put up the name somewhere in this area, I'm sure, uh, they had their very first service in their new building that we helped sponsor to build. So we're super excited. Your generosity is still moving in the kingdom of God, and we just thank you. So I'm going to pray over our offering right now that we would be able to continue to do kingdom work. So Jesus, thank you so much that uh, your people's generosity is active, that it is moving, that it is uh, building your kingdom. We thank you for the church that we were able to help sponsor in Kenya and that you would just continue to move in their lives and move in what's happening in their community and in their congregation. Lord, bless this offering. Let it continue to move in your kingdom. And it's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Hi, everyone. I'm Taryn, a member here at West Valley Christian Church, where we exist to love God and love people. And here are your announcements. Men's breakfast is this Saturday, November 7th. The men will be meeting on WebEx at 9 a.m., but you can pick up a great breakfast prepared by West Valley Iron Chefs between 8 and 8.30 that morning. If you want food, sign up on the link in the newsletter on the church website or call the church office no later than Thursday, November 5th. Christmas is coming and Operation Christmas Child is here. Fill a shoebox with items a child would need and bring it to the church no later than November 15th. You can get a shoebox brochure and a list of suggested items between October 25th and November 1st here at the church. You can find more information at SamaritansPurse.org. Celebrate 2020 Picnic is November 14th. Mark your calendars. We want the entire church to come. We will be celebrating all the blessings God has provided our church. It will be on the lawn this year on Saturday, November 14th at 1 to 2.30 p.m. And lunch being served will be Chick-fil-A. Registration is essential, so go to our website and click on the event to register. And those are all the announcements I have for you today. If you are new to us, we are so glad you decided to visit. We would love for you to make West Valley your church home. Have a great week. I want to thank you for joining us for our service today. And, and I, I, I truly pray that this has filled your cup and that you've been encouraged through the worship and through all the different uh, things that we saw in God's word or, or just maybe being able to have some communion. I, I also want to thank you for just allowing me to share about the, this incredible girl that, whose name we don't know 
uh, but the impact in which she made. I am looking forward to how God is going to use this unnamed opportunities uh, in my life to love up on a name in, in, in my life with giving them some grace and kindness that maybe I might not want to give, but the Lord is going to give me the opportunity to give so I could live my life and uh, as an example of a stone of remembrance to him. God bless you and have a great week and we look forward to seeing you next time.